Welcome back to another random review and how to today in this video, we're going to be showing you how to put a farmhouse sink into an existing kitchen here. Um, we're getting new granite installed in a couple weeks. They're going to be coming in a couple weeks to measure. So we wanted to start with the sink. Um, we got a Deer Valley sink. There's a link down below to the video of me unboxing that you're going to see me actually put that sink in here. Um, so I'm just kind of strategizing right now, right? I took my doors off. We just freshly painted these cabinets, um, but I didn't really do too much here because I knew this was all coming out. Um, but what's basically going to happen is our new sink is going to be flush up to the countertops because it's a farmhouse. It's going to be sticking out. So this line I already marked to kind of look through everything. Um, this is all coming out. So these two pieces and this center piece are all going to come out. So I already loosened my countertops. I took all this because these are all coming out. So I took everything out. Um, but what's interesting and, and just probably a, a lucky happenstance here is that my new sink's going to actually fit right in between these two. So it should be almost flush uh, if I took my measurements correctly. So what I need to do is cut here, cut here, cut there. I'm going to take the countertop off first. I'm actually going to cut this into pieces. This is like the composite board countertop. So I'm just going to cut a section here on the other side. That way I could lift this piece out, but I'm going to take my sink out too. So I'm going to kind of bring you in closer to kind of look underneath the sink and talk about all the things I'm thinking about that you should be thinking about as you go into this. I don't like to dive right in and start ripping. I really just like to strategize, write things down. That way I'm not missing anything and I don't run into any issues. I know I'm going to run into issues. I always do. But I just want to make sure I can think through the things that I might not foresee happening. So let's take a little bit of a closer look here. So underneath our sink, what I know is that from this new measurement where the bottom of the sink's going to go, um, that everything here inside is going to drop at least that distance. So if I'm kind of going straight on, you could see the distance it's coming down. It's about five inches. So when I'm looking at my plumbing and um, I consulted with my plumber, who happens to be my brother, um, we know that this sink's going to drop down five inches, which means I might end up losing my garbage disposal if I can't cut this piece up uh, and make it fit because these pieces are all glued. Now, I have options. I could take the wall out. I could drop this entire underneath PVC down to make it fit, but I'm also, I don't have a ton of room underneath to play with. There used to be a shelf here I took out. I'd like to get that shelf back in. We keep a lot of stuff under here, cleaners and things like that. I don't wanna lose that space, but I also don't mind if I lose my disposal. Uh, the new sink that we have has basket racks in the drain, so I think that'll be good enough. I mean, we use it every day, but we use it because we have it. So if it's something I have to get rid of, I will get rid of it. But I'm going to wait to make that decision until I have the sink in and dropped. Um, the good news is, is my existing plumbing in the back, I don't think I have to take out. My PVC is probably far enough back. I need 20 inches of depth. Um, and because the sink's going to stick out, I could actually use that little bit of wiggle room coming out to make sure that I don't move that. But should I have to, I'll just cut my pieces down and uh, replumb that, but I'm gonna try to keep that existing. I also wanna keep in mind that this piece is gonna be fine. I have wiggle room there to cut down and, and keep this uh, P-trap in. I'm just worried that if I go too low with this, that the garbage disposal is gonna be able to get stuff out and I'm gonna deal with clogs more often than I want to. So as I'm strategizing here, those are things I'm thinking about. Where's the dishwasher draining in? Where's the line for the dishwasher that goes in? And then also my framing, how am I gonna fit that in? So. For farmhouse sinks, if you don't know already, your framing has to at least support it. So because these things are so heavy, mine weighs about 120 pounds with no water in it, no pans in it, nothing in it. So I know that it's going to definitely go up on that. I'm thinking it could be closer to 200, if not more. So what I'm planning on doing is having a 2x4 that goes across the wall here to support right at my, my bottom marker. And then two 2x4 two studs that go down that are going to be glued to this wall, screwed into it, and also resting on my subfloor. So this is my subfloor down below. I want to have that brace. So two legs here, the cross, um, and then on the other side here, same thing. Two legs going down with the cross. That should be plenty to hold it up. If I get in a pinch where I think it's not enough and I get nervous about these things, I might put a brace across the bottom that will kind of be hidden behind the cabinets here. So I'm thinking about that too. So that is the game plan for inside this. I'm going to rip everything out. We're going to cut our countertop so that I could take this section out. Everything's loose and everything's coming out as far as counters. So I'm not too worried about that, but I, I need to also think, and this is another consideration, until they come measure in three weeks, I need to be able to use this sink. So the new sink goes in, I'm gonna to try to reuse that faucet, which I might actually put a two by four against the back, or I might just drill a hole into the existing countertop temporarily. That way I don't lose out on my faucet. So that's kind of my game plan there. And the other thing I'm thinking about, this is just me being cheap, 
is how can I salvage any of this wood? Because what I want to do is I want to, I'm going to have to get new cabinets because the ones that I have existing, I could either cut them and it's going to look stupid uh, because this is the style they are. They have this nice finish in them. So I could either cut it and it looks dumb or I could just new ca get new cabinets. So that's what I'm going to do. Get two new doors, not cabinets, get two new doors. But I still might, I still want this brace going across because this is where the top's closed to. Um, so if I could salvage this piece across the top, it's one piece. I see the seam there. There's a seam over here and one on that side. I'm going to try to salvage that piece because if I could reuse that, that would be clutch going across there. Now, otherwise, I'm just going to go get a little piece of wood that, you know, two inches there uh, and I'll use that instead. But for now, that's the game plan. So I'm going to get started tearing all this out. I think I've done enough talking in the intro of this. Uh, I'm going to try to record as much as I can. I'll put some narration over top of it of what I'm doing and what kind of problems I run into. And we'll just go from there. I'm gonna remove all my count or all my drawers right now. Mine are pretty simple. They come down and up. I'm gonna take all these out and move them to another space because I'm gonna try to cut the counter right here. There's enough brace here that I could set it back down. The goal is to take the sink out, keep the countertop there because it's gonna give us a really good picture of what the new one's gonna look like with the counter. So I'll probably end up cutting this piece out um, and then leaving the lips. So it's gonna look exactly like a can, but for now I'm gonna cut the counter here. And then I gotta be careful, I got my dishwasher. I'm gonna try to cut the counter across there. Uh, and that's the plan. So I never fall right there because I read all but you did it. Yeah. Um, let's see. Almost. So our idea here is now we're going to build our underneath frame. So I'm going to do two two by fours on the floor stood up on their side. I'm going to do two braces going down and then a piece that goes horizontally on the top. So basically it's going to look like a big, uh, let's call it an H, the bottom part of a flat squared off H. I'm going to have two of those, but they're going to be braced in the bottom. So the first part I'm cutting here is just that bottom piece. Now I am going to have it sticking out. So your farmhouse thing can stick out between one to two inches, probably at max. I'm gonna go with two, um, just to have a little bit of that overhang coming out. So I wanna make sure I'm building that frame. It's as far forward as it can be. I don't want too much weight hanging off the front. So the part we're gonna do now is kind of cut all the framing, put it all together. Uh, that way we can have something loose we could set in there and set that farmhouse sink in to see what it looks like. So let's start that process. All right, so now you can see I got my bottom board in. Again, they're flipped up, so they're going like that. These are also, I'm measuring against things. Uh, I know right now my cabinets up top are uneven. I measured these little marks are 10 inches down, uh, but if I put a level to it, everything comes up. So I know I'm gonna be a little bit off if I'm trying to measure from the top of the cabinets like they tell you to. So I'm actually gonna measure from the floor, 
assuming my floor is flat. So that's the, the point that I'm at now. Uh, but these right now are sitting pretty even, about six from the wall there, six from the wall there. Again, so now my braces I got to plan on. I'm going to figure out which side I want to go to, 10 up, and I'm going to build my bracket coming up. My side brace, one hair, one hair, one hair, one hair. So we got to go to the 19 and a half, right there. All right, right, right. Because we're a marker, we got to go a little bit past. So just slide your marker right there. Where? Right against the edge. Just do this like that. You could literally hold it like this. Okay? Okay. All right. This down, start revving it up. What's it got to be? Um. 19 and a half? 19 and a half. Okay, so this is what our frame looks like. Nothing secured, it's just I wanted to lay it in there, make sure. Um, everything is edge to edge, up and down. It's really close to my mark um, that I made for where my cabinets, or where my sink needs to go. But all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try to like lightly I'm gonna put a screw into this just so it holds together and then I'll be able to set the sink on and see what it looks like. But that's all I need framing wise. Again, I'm right down on the floorboards there. Level wise, this is where it kind of comes. You can see I'm not level, but I'm gonna be able to shim that. Let's see in there a little bit. Definitely not level. That's not true for the other side too. So I'm gonna shim it once I get it in there so that this side comes up a little bit in the front. So I just need a little bit. Um, but again, I'm, I'm worried about if the counters are even. So part of this whole thing is when you put these in, right Grace, you put this in, um, it needs to be when the guy comes to measure and do this, the countertops, we wanna make sure we're even for him. Um, so everything's gonna kind of be temporary, but at least we'll be able to use the sink, do everything we need to do there. Our game plan from here is to Take our two pieces here. I nailed them together. I put a screw in and a nail, for whatever reason. Put some glue here at the seam. Over here, we're going to glue the backs, put these in. I ended up making these pieces much longer. I had shorter pieces. I don't know why I did that. Uh, I just wanted it so nothing would slide off or be too short. So I'm gonna glue the back of this, stick it in, put those pieces on top with glue behind them. So I'm gonna glue the outside edges here, stick those on, and then I'm gonna use my shims uh, once I put the sink on top of everything, I'm going to shim it up. That way it's all level. I ended up cutting my pieces here so that I had a little more gap between the top here, which is where the counters are going to sit. Um, just because I was really flush with that and I didn't want to be. So I lowered it and then that way I could shim it up and level the sink at the same time. And then that's going to be it. That's how we're going to level the sink and put it in. Then we're going to work on the plumbing. All right, so right now I am about level. Actually, I am level. So I'm level there, level in the middle there, and then I'm level on this end as well. And so what I did underneath here is I got a couple shims in, stacked them, two on the base, one on top, two on the base, one on top. This one kind of hit the cabinet. Um, but for right now, it's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drill these into the wall. I got glue behind them. Same on this side. A little sloppy, but I'm going to glue that in. That secures the whole frame and base. I'm going to put some screws in the bottom piece, screws on this top piece like that on both sides. Where I'm at now is I got my frame in, drilled in. Um, I started the shim underneath. So I have a Little bit of a, I don't want to say an issue, but there is definitely too big of a gap in between where the counter is going to go down there uh, in the bottom of the sink. It should be about an eighth to sixteenth of an inch. I definitely have about a quarter inch, if not more in the back. It looks like about a half. So what's going to happen is I'm going to end up shimming once I get my counters in. Um, I'm going to shim everything. The thing about them measuring is measuring for where this sits, which is the most important. It's level this way, it's level front to back. So the sink itself is level and where it needs to be. The frame's all done. Um, so 
even I'm going to go ahead and plumb it because I could plumb it now because my pipes are going to be going up and down for any adjustments. So any plumbing that I do here, um, it's going to be easy to move this thing up and down when I need to do it. And at the end of the day, I could always undo all the plumbing and put that back in. So I'm not worried about that. What I wanted the most was a good base, a good frame, nice and sturdy, cut into the sides, glued into the sides. Got to clean up some of that glue over there. Um, but this is where, at least framing wise for the farmhouse sink, that's where I need to be for everything. So uh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to put in a temporary two by four in the back, drilled into the countertops. Uh, I'm going to take the existing sink that I got there and I'm going to put that in on top. So we still have water because we're about three weeks out until measurements and probably five to six until countertops. So I don't be left uh, without that. So I'm going to plumb everything in now and get that all hooked up. The counters have been installed. I got my sink set. Um, as you can see, I have my cock all the way in there, all the way around the edges, so that's good. Um, underneath, what I ended up doing to actually get this set is I wedged underneath these boards. I used actually a crowbar to lift this side up, made it real tight, and I just kind of kept looking at the top to make sure that um, my edging was even around the edges. So I kept lifting up, pushing up, and then when I had it ready, I just zipped it in so it was high. I moved my board underneath. You can see I put some shims underneath both sides. Um, but that is how I got it all in. Now, I did lose my garbage disposal, but I'm going to cut the floor. I'm gonna put in another drain so I could route my garbage disposal in. But putting in a farmhouse sink has a lot more depth. I got 10 inches here, um, so I pushed everything down. I need new doors, um, new garbage disposal, you drain for that so this is how you set that sink it's not easy um, if it's a two-person job I'd recommend doing it that way but um, they are nice 